Universe and welcome to the review of the Eredivisie and League A. As always, we will start in the Eredivisie before we go into the uh, in League A, where there was more happening, but arguably the biggest match was in the Eredivisie at the top up between Ajax and PSV. And I was thinking, yeah, may, maybe if I just go by pure uh, emotion, okay, there is hardly any game in the top five league that beats uh, Le Classique or uh, Le Classico, meaning uh, OM against PSG. However, when I think that matchup is not really a title decider this, uh, these days any, any, any anymore, when was the last time that OM really could claim that they were up there playing for a title? Whereas, as much as there's a difference now between Ajax and PSV, um, it is still 1v2 and PSV always kind of seems to be edging, maybe not. I think the gap is, is widening death, death in the Netherlands at the moment, but uh, it still has a little bit more riding on it. I think I will talk differently between uh, PSG and Lyon possibly. That I think one could argue has a bit of a bigger significance, but you know, in France, that's maybe the... Um, Advantage of league, uh, uh, there are few more challengers than the, uh, to PSG than there are in the Netherlands to Ajax, though Feyenoord might be building something as well. In any case, I am wearing, of course, Ajax, which I figured is at the moment number my fifth shirt that I ever got. Could have been fourth or third even as well, but I think it's the fifth one. Uh, one of the oldest, the ones of the shirts that I have longest, and to be honest, I'm wearing Ajax and I've been wearing this now also in the Champions League review video. It's, I'm having a whole lot of fun with Ajax. I think of all the big teams, is there any other team that is more enjoyable to watch Many any other really, really big team? I mean, for me, Ajax is a giant in the European game uh, and one that uh, continues to develop their own philosophy. It is an absolute joy uh, being for Ajax and I know if I was Dutch, there's a high chance that I would not be an Ajax fan. But, you know, from an international perspective, it is much easier to follow them and be a fan of the Ajax team. Because, yeah, it is typically fun. They stand for a very attractive style, but they're also not one among the big leagues. So I really, really like it. In any case, lots of talk about Ajax. Uh, let's talk about the topper, um, which is the Austin I mean, uh, Feyenoord against Cambuur, as when you see the stats cast, Feyenoord, and that's why they're up here, they made the biggest jump um, in terms of expected points because it was not a way win. It also tells you how much Ajax is above the rest when a win over PSV doesn't change your expected points as much as in the way we know Feyenoord over Cambuur. It's just really Ajax is flying way above and they are, I think they're still in 538 among the top five teams in Europe at the moment, which is staggering. I don't necessarily see Ajax in the top five, but I see Ajax definitely in the top 10 teams. Uh, at this moment. Ah, and by the way, yes, Ajax, there's an Ajax short shirt here with a French-Dutch uh, background. I'm not so far as I'm now with my German one where I can wear all kinds of different uh, teams and have still some spares, but this will be a target for next year. Now, the top bar. Uh It was honestly for the first half, a rather even game where I would even give in the early exchanges, PSV had the better of the chances. Uh, but there were two big factors that swung the game, I think, towards Ajax. And that was A, um, injuries for PSV, A and B, that PSV had two days less for this game. PSV played already, uh, played on Thursday, where Ajax played on Tuesday. So I think that made a huge difference in that. And then... Uh, PSV just ran out of steam. The first half, I think it was not a great game, but it was a rather open game. However, the way the first uh, the first goal came, when Tadic just plays around from Hazo Berhoes, who uh, hits it rather sweetly through the keeper in a way. Uh, but yeah, it was 1-0. Uh, uh, there was also a good chance um, by Anthony, who, who just missed wide, but also PSV, I mean, Zahavi early, or earlier should have probably made a goal, and a little bit later, you know, there were 
There were chances. However, I think it all broke when Alea just out jumps Ramalho in the 56th and then a little bit later Antonina 66 makes it 3-0. Uh, that changed the game and then PSV had nothing to add. Uh, and in reverse, you know, you could take Berghuis off and bring Klaassen on. Uh, and that Klaassen at the moment is a bit part player, also speaks well of volumes of where this uh, are. 76 so in a 10 minute rhythm Ajax got the goals and then very late on uh, in the uh, nine, in the 91st Tadic got his goal and so uh, Ajax completely uh, underlining that they are the class of the league and we don't actually need to take talk much more but uh, it has to be said that Feyenoord potentially potentially has something growing uh, also as PSV but I think this will take another season or two until they can uh, charge up there. You saw actually the title <laughs> projectile dysfunction I needed to do something. League A at the moment is the hottest league out there. I mean the amount of unrest and some of which I haven't even talked about. I think the uh, the little last game uh, they were uh, 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 unrest and we of course had the Nice against Marseille uh, and a few others saint etienne uh you don't think it's a rivalry it is not a rivalry however the saint etienne is so bad at this moment that the fans uh, they just want to get Claude Piel fired and just are pro protesting and uh, absolutely uh, try to either get the, uh, the match abandoned or, or they by throwing fireworks uh, flares onto the pitch. Uh, I think even the net uh, was burning in, in such a way that it had to, to 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 be replaced. I mean, a really really rough scenes there. Uh, and again, Liga making kind of the noise, the wrong noises in many ways, which is a shame. I mean, it on one side you actually watch because you see how uh, much pent up anger there seemingly is among French fans. Uh, which I definitely think is not only because they have been locked out by Corona, but you hear also there is there are some other issues there. It just needs to get out and needs to find a, um, you know, <laughs> needs to find a, a ventile where it can go out. And there you go. Uh, the game actually was a positive sign for uh, for Saint Etienne because they found themselves two 0 down in 56 and can find a two two late equalizer in the 93rd. Uh, other remarkable games, I saw a little bit of Lille against Brest where uh, uh, Jonathan David gave them a lead and then uh, Fevre, who is heavily linked with Milan, gives uh, Brest an equalizer. So that was a, a lost points for uh, Lille for sure. Uh, and then Lyon, they came back from 2-0 down at Sparta Prague. Now they did the same thing uh, the other way around. They had a 2-0, comfortable 2-0 lead at Nice. Toko Kambi and Awa in the 68th minute, all fine. When Atal in the 81st pulls one back, you think everything is fine. Then Cadavere is getting sent off with a straight red. In the 85th, the penalty is, uh, <laughs> is uh, converted by Delore in the 89th. Uh-oh, points lost, but you know, at least we get, get, get a point of it. No, just a bit later, uh, Gesson makes it 3-2. And that, those three two goals literally came in the last 10 minutes of the game. Uh, huge loss for Lyon. Uh, and kind of, you know, when you see the overall results, despite then uh, the other the big match not ending uh, with a winner, still PSG feels kind of a winner in there. Monaco... They at least got uh, a win uh, to, through Folland and Ben Yeda in the first half and then uh, Martins before as a late Savonier goal uh, just gives like cosmetics for Mont Montpellier. And then OM against PSG. I said it in my big, this was the craziest weekend uh, <laughs> this year. I watched this game mainly because of the atmosphere, number one, number two, yes, Messi. Uh, there it was more star power than on the other fields, and I actually really wonder when we we'll see how Messi does in a, I don't want to say proper rival game because El Clasico is a proper ri rival game, but the heated atmosphere that you have at the Velodrome, this is something that Messi never has experienced uh, in a rivalry game. Uh, I would 
venture there because he left Ar Argentina for, uh, for way too long. This has a very, this had a very Argentinian flair all over with San Paoli against Pochettino. And Pochettino went with the lineup that I actually think is made for catastrophe in many ways. He pulled out Di Maria, Messi, Mbappé and Neymar. Uh, and, and you know, seem, seemingly Messi and Di, Di Maria on the wings and then uh, Neymar and Mbappé kind of switch, switching it up in the middle. Um, to me, Messi is a little bit too much lost if he's so strictly out there. But I understand if you have the three superstars, each one of has to has to have a role. I also have to say, um, Neymar didn't look quite fit uh, there, although he had a few chances. But he 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 looked a little bit lost. But the interplay between Messi and Mbappe looks already like something. Uh, I think they are finding themselves. Um, I would like to have it a little bit more fluent that when that Messi, yeah, he looked in Barcelona, you know, he always ran on the right, right wing, and then drew to the middle. I think if they can manage something, get an interplay on 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 the front, there's something there. I also have to, I have to say that Messi, especially later, was tracking back and really um, also helping with the press. I mean, it looked more of a team performance than whatever I've seen out of PSG as of late. The game itself was rather, rather, rather tight. I mean, yes, huge advantage for PSG, but you know, uh, they had an early goal, on goal, <laughs> through Leon Perez, disallowed correctly so, because Neymar was all offside. But then a few minutes later, Milik seemingly had scored uh, the go ahead goal, and the whole stadium exploded there. I mean, flares everywhere. They seemingly had increased the security, so. <laughs> Yeah, there are so many flares in there that I wanted that even the mobile nets, if someone was throwing something, those mobile nets were needed and were absolutely useless. Whenever, especially Neymar wanted to take a core he, he got pelted. And, uh, to his credit, he took his time to take the penalty. Messi also got a little bit, but not as much. And, and, and you could see that Neymar is a much, 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 and even from this part here, a much, much, much more hated figure than... Um, than is uh, Messi. So yeah, uh, it was really, uh, it, it was a game that, that, that reminded me when I cook uh, some pasta and you, it's boiling up, boiling up, the bubbles are coming up, coming up and then you kind of need to either blow over it or quickly take it from heat that the uh, bubbles are coming, coming down. It was always about to bubble over and it, uh, it's maybe to really explode. What I think helped it in a way that Hakimi got sent off with a red card at that point. PSG, even with 10 men, could control the game and seemed happily happy with the draw and Marseille also. So uh, towards the end, the game was not as heated as it could have been. And maybe even the players on the pitch, although Gwen Duz is, is so fitting for PSG. I mean, he is about to boil over also at any point. Um, it's a game where the heat is just getting too too much. I think the first time that uh, Neymar took a corner, one went to take a corner, corner kick and got pelted, they even needed to hold the game and say, uh, don't throw any uh, projectiles on there. And that's why projectile dysfunction in the title. Highly enjoyable match to watch, even if there were no, no goals. Uh, there were a few scenes where Messi kind of took a shot but got blocked and so I also, also thought, yeah, in Spain, it is much less physically. Thoroughly enjoyed this game. It was, but it was kind of this more boring. You want, you're watching and just waiting that something is boiling over and something is happening. So yeah, but that was for many games this uh, weekend. In any case, uh, those are my thoughts from the Eredivisie League. Uh, please add something uh, if you want below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell. So in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day.